Hello and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we're working on my own. This is my 2006 Toyota Corolla. And well, let's see. We've got an airbag light on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a quick code scan and verify what's going on here. pin all right that's all correct health report and just cover everything just to see what's going on here percent we have two fault codes in the supplemental inflatable restraint system fault report current and history open drivers squib dual stage second circuit that usually refers to the clock spring that's down in here so what we're going to do is we're going to take the airbag out we're going to do some testing on this clock spring and possibly replace it And the tools that we're going to be using for this, regular screwdriver, trim tool, Phillips screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench to disconnect the battery, socket wrench extension, and a T30 socket. These are captive screws. So screw them all the way out and just leave them be, they will not fall out. Let's get underneath here. Hood propped open, there we go. Now let's get down here and get this negative battery loosened up we don't want to take a chance of an airbag blowing in our face so we're gonna battery down and cable out of the way so it won't reconnect now let's go get that clock spring exposed get this airbag right here up and out of the way it's gonna be a little tricky because those captive screws don't want to let go of it so let me put you down over here see what we got okay let's get that out of there all right well we're supposed to come out. I don't want to, so we're going to use the regular screwdriver. All right. So I pushed one of the screws out of the way, which is, uh, if I can get it to pop out here. This is one of the captured screws. So you got to pop that out of the way to get the airbag loose. And on the back side of the airbag, You've got these two little orange and black clips. We're going to take these, lift these up. These little yellow pieces. Get my lack of fingernails underneath them. Lift them up. That unlocks them. And then they will lift up and off the airbag. So we can remove the airbag. When you put the airbag someplace, place it facing metal side down, because if it blows this way here, it's extremely dangerous. This way here is a lot less dangerous. We're going to put that down on the floor and get it out of the way. Now, back to the steering wheel. These are the squib wires. So let's see what we can figure out as far as diagnostics are concerned. 
uh, we're gonna plug one side back into the airbag and rerun the codes and see what happens. This time we're just gonna go system selection, body control, supplemental, and read fault code. What do we got now? 1818 dual squib open, current and history. So the one that we unplugged was the black one. The black one apparently is the one that has a, uh, a broken wire in it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a jumper across these with the battery disconnected. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna look for a short circuit. All right, so what we've done is we put a small jumper wire in the uh, the black plug. The orange plug is still to the airbag. And let's see what we got now for fault codes. We now have short in driver's squib, second step circuit, current and history. So that's going to be that right there. So we're going to pull this one, turn the car, car off. Pull this out, turn it back on, come back up here, clear the fault memory, and now we're back to 1811, squid open, so our broken Something or other isn't making sense here because if I short this, it's registering short. If I leave this open, it's, it's registering as open. So I may actually have an open in the airbag itself. Isn't that interesting? Okay, after farting around with that for a little bit, I found out that uh, if I short it, it says short. If it's open, it says open. So I'm going to put the airbag back in for the moment. The screw on that one side getting in the way. There we go. And we're gonna come up here and we got no no trouble codes at the moment. Read fault code. Nothing. Uh, let's see what we can do for real time real data stream. We only have six options. Select all. And let's see, nothing going on here, number of DTCs. Let's turn the steering, whoops, let's start the car so I can turn the steering wheel. Still no airbag light. Turn the steering wheel to the left. This is what tripped it off before. And we have no airbag light. All the way to the right. All the way to the left. All the way to the right, all the way to the left. Okay, well, maybe this is turning into a no parts required repair. How interesting. Let's go back and There's nothing here. Read fault code. We've got nothing. So apparently this is a no parts required repair. And just because we've got 217,715 miles currently on the clock. Now we'll make the last two idiot lights disappear. And there, we have no more idiot lights on the dashboard. Well, that didn't go the way I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to be putting a clock spring in today, but apparently we don't need to. Uh, unless, for some reason, this decides to come back on again. In which case, we will go through with the clock spring replacement. And that will be added onto this video, I guess, if uh, it happens soon. Well, apparently, I jumped the gun a little bit. Let's see if I can get this for you. Turn the steering wheel to the left, and there it is. 
So we're going to proceed with the clock spring. So once again, we're going to take this airbag back off, pull the yellow plugs. There are the yellow tabs and then the orange and black plug. Take the airbag off, set the airbag facing up on the floor. And let's see, let's get these wires up another way. The next thing we need to do is steering wheel. This is where your 19 millimeter comes in handy. We're going to use the impact and we're going to take that nut right there off. Just like so. And there's the, there's the nut right there. And yes, the horn is still hooked up and somebody's going to go lose their mind on me. Um, all right, now we're going to show you how to get the steering wheel off without a fancy puller. Now, with both hands, grab a hold of the steering wheel and rock it back and forth while lightly pulling towards you, and it'll usually just come right off, just like that. Now, we've got a wire right here that goes into the clock spring. You need to uh, remove that. Push it on the tab, pull it out. And now we're free from the clock spring. You can lift the steering wheel off. Make sure your steering wheel is straight, by the way, before you do this. Um, and this is your clock spring. There's a little thing right here to, to lock it, but we're not going to be doing that. Now we need to take these two Phillips screws out right here. Pull down on this cover. You have to finagle a little bit to get it to unhawk. And you don't have to take it all the way down, just enough to get the clock spring out from underneath it. And then you got plug in the back. And there's your clock spring out. And here's our brand new clock spring. 8430602110. This is Toyota. First thing you want to do always take the part out and compare it to your new one. Make sure that they're the same. Make sure that they have the same plugs in the same locations. And repeat the install. Do not pull this out until you are uh, all installed and ready to go. all there is to that to get that down in there now put your trim back together there we go yeah we're all good now put our screws back in Steering wheel goes back on. These two come through at the top of the steering wheel. And then set the steering wheel down on the shaft. You see that little orange piece is in the way there. Now's a good time to go ahead and pull that out. And then again, get those little wires up through the top of the steering wheel. Everything centered. Not going anywhere. Good. Okay. Now we can go ahead and start hooking things back up again. Get that plugged in. Now all we got left to do is the earbag and the nut on the steering wheel. The nut and the steering wheel. I'm gonna tighten this one down to about 30 ugga duggas. Um yeah, one more. There, now I know that's tight. 
Yep, that ain't going nowhere. Now let's put the airbag back in. I'm going to turn the car back off for this. Because it still makes me just a tad bit nervous. The battery should be disconnected, but it's not. So if this blows, you'll get to see it on... I don't know. Well, if the camera survives the explosion anyways. So, uh, come on, get down in there. Once you plug it down in, then you push your little yellow caps and it locks them down in. We're all plugged in in here. We have a horn. Let's see. Start the car back up. Airbag light is still on. Let's go to... Oh, airbag just went off on its own. So I think that's good. Read fault code. Uh, open driver squib circuit. Clear fault. Communicating okay. Supplemental restraint system. No codes. All right. Turn the car off. Turn the car back on. Airbag light is still on. Airbag light just went off. Uh, read fault codes. We have no fault codes. So let's go ahead and put our uh, screws back in. And get this steering wheel all buttoned up. Get the screw in here. spring replaced airbag light is out confirmed that the cruise control works so we're all good so if you guys like that one please feel free to like comment subscribe hit that notification bell for upcoming videos and most importantly remember you've got no more excuses pick up those wrenches If you guys are anything like me, you want to know what happened in here. So we're going to carefully pop this baby open. One of the things I've already noticed on this particular one is there's a piece here in the bottom that pops out. Or I thought it popped out. All right. Well, either way. Got a whole bunch of little plastic tabs. All the way around this thing. Ow, that hurt. Hmm. We will get this open. Okay, there's the bottom piece. This is the part that's actually responsible for turning your blinker on and off. 
and inside here is the clock spring. Let's see if we can get this open without completely unraveling all of it. Might be a little late already. Yeah, I think this is a little late already. Okay. But in any case, this is what uh, we're dealing with. We've got a ribbon that wraps around the inside. We've got a ribbon that wraps around the outside. And as this thing rotates, it draws the ribbon off of the middle and wraps around the outside. And when it goes back the other way, it draws the ribbon off the outside and wraps it back around the middle. So this is our, our ribbon. And if we go all the way this way, that's as far as it goes. There's the end of the ribbon. And we have... Oh, let's see, we got a spot right here that looks worn. That was dirty. Well, it doesn't look like this ribbon got damaged in any way, shape, or form. So. Hmm. Isn't this interesting? Right here, here, and here, they almost look like uh, burn marks. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, this this is what they charge a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars in some cases for a couple of little tiny pieces of plastic and a ribbon cable. Silly little ribbon cable. That's all there is to it. And before going any further, I want to get in here and get this battery disconnected. Actually, I probably should cut the engine off first. 